Seven years ago, a pair of bright blue eyes met mine through the fencing on a kennel door, and my whole world changed. I was volunteering as a dog walker at the Oregon Humane Society, spending a few hours a week strolling through their grounds with adorable, adoptable pups. I had a dog of my own at home, a large Malamute mix, who kept me busy and so well-loved. I wasn't looking for anything more. I just wanted to give these creatures some of my time while they waited for their own forever homes. It was a Tuesday in May, notably warmer than usual, and I was thrilled to stretch my legs in the crisp spring air. I tied my apron around my waist and laced my volunteer badge around my neck. Walking down the hallway of the Red Pod, I glanced at every dog's card, checking to see if I was authorized to walk them. I had only been at it a few months, so the more mellow, slow lane dogs were just my speed. Before I even got to the card on her door, Osa's eyes grabbed at mine. I was drawn in. I needed to get closer. I slipped the lock from her door and slowly, cautiously, I entered her kennel. She studied me for a minute, then walked the few steps to get to me, paused for another moment, then gave me two huge smooches and curled her entire body into my lap. We spent a long time like that, with her in my lap, giving me kisses. I sent a few text messages to my partner, mostly pictures of Osa giving me those big kisses and a bunch of exclamation marks. He fell in love with her, too. We knew that we had the time and the resources to care for her. So in a few short minutes, we agreed. We wanted her to join our family. I dragged myself away from her, only to race to the front desk to fill out an adoption application. After time spent living on the streets, a stay in a shelter in California, moving up to Oregon through the Oregon Humane Society's Second Chance program, being adopted once and living with another family that just wasn't the right fit for her unique personality, Osa walked out of the shelter for the last time. With me, Osa was finally home. On that first night with Osa, she walked through our front door with her tail slightly tucked and her ears pulled all the way back. She seemed really nervous, and she had every right to be. She had, in her first few years of life, lived with another family, lived on the streets, and lived in two different shelters. Home was more of a concept than something she had ever really felt before. We gave her plenty of time to relax and unwind alone letting her sniff around the house and explore every corner of the yard. At the end of the night, we were sitting on the floor watching TV, giving her space, when she came right up to Rye and plopped her head into his lap. She slept like that all night with her head on Rye. She wouldn't leave his side. It was like she had never really slept before. I think she knew that this was going to be her last stop and that she could finally rest. Osa was timid and guarded at first. But after introducing her to hiking, we chipped away at the walls she had built around her, and we saw her personality really emerge. Osa loves exploring outdoors with us. She loves swimming in high mountain lakes and going on bike rides down dusty desert tracks. The beach became her most favorite place to play, and every time we hit Highway 101, she knows exactly where she is. She pokes her little nose out of the car window and breathes in all that salty air. Her tail wags like the blades of a helicopter. She is happiest when she can hear the crashing waves of the ocean with her family by her side. It's so sweet to watch her watch the waves. It seems like she's commanding them, like she is the queen of the sea. The transformation we saw in her was incredible. From a creature full of self-doubt to one beaming with confidence, she inspired me to see the beauty in myself and the world around me. In addition to her love of hiking and long walks on the beach, Osa loves carrots. Watching her eat them is probably one of the top five favorite things in the whole wide world. She chomp, chomp, chomps them like a hungry hippo, with little bits of orange flying from around her mouth. She also loves to chase her brother, Jasper, our other rescue pup, around the house and yard. He has a cherished ball that he sleeps with, but sometimes she sneaks over and steals it from him. She can be such a big sister sometimes. A lot of folks will say they dreamed of their profession their entire lives, but that wasn't the case with me. I was incredibly self-conscious about my writing, thinking it was not good enough, my stories weren't interesting, and numerous other negative self-talk phrases. I never believed that I could be an author, 
so I never let myself dream of it. Even so, I still continued to write. I wrote books as a child, and even after completion, I would hide them from view from anyone. I thought that majoring in journalism would be a good place to finally pursue a future in writing, but after failing grammar, I thought that once again, this just wasn't the dream for me. I still continued writing wherever I could. One day, about a year into my job as a sales manager, my boss called me into his office. He was reading over an email I had sent to a client when I walked in. He looked up from his computer and he said, this is what you should do. I gave him a quizzical look, so he continued on. Your pen is mighty, he said. You can articulate and connect with clients in just a few sentences better than I could in months of correspondence. This is what you should do. You are a writer. I continued in that job and worked other various sales jobs after that, but I always held his words close to my heart. After that, I allowed myself to dream of being an author, to dream of following my passion, and that dream led me here, with a published children's book that has been shipped to almost every state in America, several places in Canada, and even across the ocean to France. Our book, Osa, A Curiously Different Dog, came from the real-life story of our rescue pup, Osa. She is what we lovingly refer to as a mini-breed dog, made up of a little bit of many different things. Part German Shepherd, part Alaskan Malamute, part Irish Setter, part Spunky, part Sweet, part Sassy. She's the best of all worlds. She's all Osa. The inspiration for this book came to me when I was reading an article about racially motivated bullying in grade schools. It was heartbreaking to hear that young children were using their differences to put each other down. I looked to the dog world, as I often do, and saw how they always practice inclusion of their fellow dogs, without hesitation, without thinking of how they may look or sound different. What a beautiful way to coexist. Then I thought about my girl, Osa a unique blend of so many things, and how she rejoices in the exquisite combination that she is. This book is a recognition of the struggle that some of us face to find ourselves, and the powerful self-acceptance we can attain when we start to celebrate each other's differences. I hope that in reading this book, children and adults alike will remember that we are all the same, all people full of love, and all people deserving of love. I found the illustrator of Osa, a curiously different dog, through an online website that highlighted women artists. It was important to me to build a team of people that believed in the story, and of course, they must love dogs. I found that and more with Megan Rizzo. She was an absolute delight to work with. She loves dogs, having two of her own, and she believed wholeheartedly in Osa's message of inclusivity and self-love. She sent over some videos of her drawing process which I find totally fascinating. In them, you can see how she pulled inspiration from photos of Osa and Jasper that I had sent her, using Osa's trademark ears to express her feelings and emotions. In real life, I can always tell exactly what Osa is thinking, feeling, if she's nervous, if she's scared, overjoyed, or content, just by looking at those ears. In the book, her emotions are on full display in the same way. I was so impressed with the way she could transform my words into brilliant illustrations. When I told her I wanted the setting of the book to be one of Osa's favorite places in Oregon, Pacific City on the Oregon coast, she incorporated so many unique details of the landscape of the coastal range. Inside the pages, you'll find little bugs and huge evergreen trees, just like you would if you were exploring the Tillamook Forest or headed down Gold Beach. Megan said that those small details, the ones you might not notice until the fourth or fifth time reading the book, is one of her favorite things inside of the pages. She also noted that drawing Wilbur brought her a great deal of joy. She loved his sassy but thoughtful personality, and it made her feel much closer to all felines, even though cats used to make her nervous in real life. I love that even among the team that created the book, these characters have the ability to change their minds. I'm so thankful that I found such an amazing artist to help tell our story. Watching Osa come to life in this special way has been an indescribable endeavor. 
I have felt so loved and so inspired by Osa, and it has been truly astonishing to watch her story comfort others the way that she has brought comfort to me. May we all be a little bit more like our dogs, fully accepting of others and of ourselves.